So for this video I've decided to um, translate one of the Unity C Sharp tutorials into a Playmaker tutorial. So the first thing I want to do is probably watch through the videos. It would be much easier to follow if you do that. Let's be and uh, the first thing you want to do is to create a plane and you want to create some walls around the plane and you want to create a sphere which is the player and place the camera a bit over like so so you should end up with for now you should end up with the walls and the plane and the ball that's that's what you're gonna end up with and the camera being a bit uh, overhead um, I'm assuming you know how to do that just watch the video if you don't <laughs> found on the 3d.com learn to tourist project for the ball then we want to make sure the ball moves now probably have done this before somehow in one way but the goal of this tutorial is try and translate C-sharp code into playmaker code so looking at the code as we go all the way So, the first thing is we want to create a float variable called move horizontal and a float variable called move vertical. As the code says, the float move horizontal is creating and that float called move horizontal. And the same is with move vertical. We want a public float later on called speed, but for now you just want to create move horizontal and move vertical which is uh, on the ball the sphere called player you want to have a variable float type called move horizontal and a variable called move vertical which is also float type that's what we want and then it's saying that vector tree movement should be new vector and it's saying the direction of move horizontal and the direction of move vertical will be the vector tree called movement. So we have to create a vector tree called movement, which is also a variable in our case. So I've created a vector three movement. If you don't remember how to do it, you, you, you type in the text there, for example, move horizontal and movement and speed, whatever, and then you f choose your var variable type here. Float being numbers with uh, decimals int being number without decimals, bool being yes and no, game object being game object like in unity, string being text, vector 2 being two directions in 2D, and vector 3 being three directions x, y and z, which is why we have moving uh, vector 3 in this case, because we want uh, up and down, left and right in terms of the ball. And then we're saying add a rigid body force to the movement. That means for the ball, you want to add a rigid body because it doesn't have a rigid body. So you want to add a rigid body called add component and write in rigid, and you should be able to find something called rigid body. In doing so, you will da then have uh, the necessary um, basic setup. So you want to create a new state, a new FSM, new state. And if you check here, it says float move horizontal equal input get access horizontal, input get access vertical. Now, if you look into the action in Playmaker, you will see a lot of things, right? And if you look at input, it says input, we click it, it said get access. So that's basically input dot get access. Input dot got get access. That's what it is. You move it over, like so. You write in horizontal. And, vert and then you move over again and you write in vertical right 
and you make a new variable if you haven't already called speed and you write in the float value 10 because you want to uh, you want to control the speed of the horizontal and vertical axis by using speed and that speed variable is also hooked on inspector which means I can control it directly uh, in the inspector rather than going in here all the time in the code now axis name horizontal and vertical why is it that the case because if you go into edit project settings and input on inspector now you will see horizontal and vertical so horizontal is left right ad and vertical is down up sw and it has the settings inbuilt already that's why we're using that specific uh, name and big h and big v matters and get axis we want to store the movement the axis in move horizontal for the one get axis for the horizontal under get axis vertical we want to store it in move vertical uh, variable as it says here it says input get axis horizontal and that's basically what we're doing here we're saying input get axis horizontal and then we're saying store it into our float move horizontal that's what we're doing here we're storing it into our move horizontal same with vertical then we are, are saying that the vector tree movement variable should be contain information from move horizontal and move vertical that's the new vector direction and that's what we're doing here we're saying vector tree variable movement which we created under variable called movement which is a vector tree variable we're saying that for the x direction we are storing we're uh, bringing in the information from move horizontal which is in get axis. So each time we move, the, 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 the coordinates is being stored into move horizontal through get axis. And that's what we're saying here in set vector 3 x, y, set. We're saying the, the direction in move horizontal and move vertical happening every frame should be stored into the vector 3 variable uh, movement, which is the direction. That direction is then used in add force, which is reduced for rigid body dot add force movement and it's basically saying that we want to move the ball towards a direction and the vector can be found in movement and that direction and vector is being uh, received from move horizontal and move vertical which is being which is being uh, getting information from get axis so ignoring all the other things I've already done the ball is moving and you will see here that it's storing the information in vector tree variable you see both in move vertical and move horizontal it's storing the amount of speed I'm going and 10 being the maximum speed so basically um, uh, 1 means up and minus 1 means down and amount of 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 10 is the amount of speed so uh, that's why it says 10 here because I have 10 on speed if I stop clicking it says uh, nil, uh, nil, zero and if I tap it it says 1, 2, 1, 2 right and the same if I go down or if I go left and right left is minus 10 because of my speed is 10 but it's actually minus 1 and, and plus 1 so that defines the direction when you're doing stuff and it's getting the information from here so if I change my speed to just one, first of all it would go quite slowly but as you see move horizontal minus one and move horizontal one that's right and it will move slowly to right and if I go down minus one on set and if I want to go up one on set so that's why it says 10 because that's the speed maximum speed we're going for if I had put in 50 it will say minus 10 and minus 50 and it will like increase the speed over time depending on uh, force mode I use okay so that was a small explanation for that moving on to the moving camera we want to do uh, want to make sure the camera follows the player properly this might be a little complicated but again you should watch the video to get a better understanding of 
actual explanation because I'm mostly just gonna try and translate the code the way I would have translated it in my mind. So we need a public game object player. No, we don't because we are doing it differently. Although you could do that as well. Uh, first, we want to create a private vector tree called offset. So on the camera, you have a vector tree called offset. It has coordinate 0, 0, 0. Position vector tree is the same as public game object player. So uh, position vector tree is the is the player object um, is the where the player is going to be in our case. Um, that's just how I decided to use it. Uh, that's the only thing I did different. Um, so the code says offset equals transform position. That means that offset should be have the position of the camera because the code is in the camera controller and this is the camera main camera so a camera controller so get position is what action you're going to use and it's saying get the position of the camera and store it in offset and the position is 10 in y axis and uh, minus 10 in z axis that's the position it's storing into the offset then we're saying transfer position equals player transfer position plus the offset. What's saying is uh, follow the camera and no, follow the player, but have an offset. Use the offset, and that's how we do that. Is we get the position of the player, which is transfer position equal player transfer position which is player game object player player game object player is the position we have called in the variable here so it's saying get the position and we drag down player into the specify game object so when you first uh, get the position it will look like this so you wanna take on specify and you wanna push down the player like so now doing so uh, it's gonna bring the player's position so when the player is moving around it's gonna co uh, register the coordinates so if I try moving around you will see it's registering the vector coordinates and you will also see that the position of the camera the offset is permanently 10 minus 10 so He's getting a position by player and he's storing it into the vector position variable. And then I'm saying that I want to add the offset, which is the camera's uh, distance from the player, into the position. And I want to then set the position of the camera to be that distance. So, what does that mean? Basically, saying Actually, I'll just show you, instead of trying to explain the logic, I'll show you what, what happens what happens if I don't have an offset and don't calculate the distance between the camera. See, the camera is Y10, Z10. That means the distance here. See, if I move the camera closer, it's saying Y2.53 and minus uh, 181 on the set that's the offset. That's the offset we're calculating on the get position for the camera. And we want to store that position, we want to store the position of the camera at the moment we start the game so it stays there by saying we want to add the offset into the position compared to the player constant movement. Because if I turn on vector 3 add you'll see the camera ends up right on the player. Because now we're saying get position of the player and set the position of the player so if I now drive around the camera is on inside the ball but because we are calculating the offset and using the offset because we're calculating the offset when we start the game still but we're not saying how to use it and vector 3 add we are saying make sure the camera is 
y10 and z minus 10 away from the ball and follow the ball and now if we click every f and everything is every frame you see it's following it if you don't have it it will follow it it will still follow the player because the get position is following uh, is saying find the player and set position is saying follow the player but it's not calculating the distance is literally flowing uh, following the player so the vector tree add is basically this last code transfer position is will play player transfer position plus the offset is what the vector tree add done uh, does here so the next we want to do is creating some pickups uh, which is simply just create a couple of boxes uh, again just follow the videos and just follow the videos and make four walls if you haven't already um, and then you wanna create uh, a, a cube and you wanna turn the cubes around by having 45, 45, 45 in rotation, and you place them around evenly. Uh, the, the main tutorial for you is just 12. I have 10. Just make sure you have uh, you know how many you have. And the code for rotating it is uh, well, I wouldn't say simple because if you haven't done it before, it's not simple at all. So let's have a look at the code. Hold on. There we go. So it's saying transform rotate fifteen, thirty, and forty five time delta time. So basically or you wanna make sure the pickup is a prefab as well and I'm organizing things just like the tutorial. So you basically find X and rotate and you basically type in the coordinates uh, 15, 30 and 45 and you do per second and every frame and it should rotate the reasonable speed okay so when you're done with that you can pause for now if you haven't done it but when you're done you're moving on to collecting and counting because you let's have a look here we go So here it's saying um, on trigger enter. This is the continuous continue part of the code. <coughs> oh, sorry. So this is the continue part. It's saying void on trigger enter collider, and it's saying if other game mode has a tag pickup, then deactivate it or set active to false. That means um, I, I have the code on the on the player uh, under something called trigger collider FSM. So here we having trigger event. Actu again, you find it in the action. Just writing trigger event, and it should pop up. If not, it's under physics, and that's basically the first part on trigger enter. That's what we use for trigger event. It's saying on trigger enter, just like the code on trigger enter and it's saying collide tag pickup if you click on the pickup and you haven't already done it on the top right it says tag add tag write in pickup go back to the prefab make sure you have hooked on pickup and it will now have that tag and it's saying uh, and I made an uh, event called deactivate and I put it on the state and I'm storing the information 
in a collider called uh, go pick up game objects. The reason for that, that's one of the different things I think uh, compared to the code in here, is because um, if you don't have um, if you don't store the information each time you hit one of the cubes and store it in game object pick up game object pick up variable uh, all of them will disappear because they are it's a prefab and if you just hit one it will think that they all should disappear so we need to save each individual pickup individually into its own game object variable which is being done here so each time I hit cube it stores it and goes back and it does does what it should do it deactivates that specific box and if I take a new one you see it quickly moves over and it does the same thing and so on if I didn't have it on you probably would end up with see nothing happened but if I on if I turn the game off and play it on it's still there so you need this uh, pickup object so it knows what to do so according to the code we now have to say that when you trigger enter a collision of a pickup in this case the pickups have is trigger on on the box collider in case you haven't done it yet you have to again do that I'm skipping a lot of things that's on the main tutorial um, so when you hit the collider we want to say that we want to turn off the object so it disappears from the screen so you look for an action called activate game object take on specify game object you drag down the prefab from the project folder and you unhook activate and that's what it does here it's saying on trigger enter if we hit the pickup tag object set it to false and that's basically what we did over here If I didn't do it, and if I didn't say if I actually did it the way I told you not to do it, if I you specify game object and I drag one of the pickups from the hierarchy and I don't store the collider and I then drive around, it's removing that specific pickup prefab that I drew, uh, pushed over. If I had moved over the prefab, with, as I showed earlier, again, it wouldn't do much. Now it all disappeared. That was what I was trying to show earlier. Uh, this time it worked. Because this time I moved over the prefab. And because you moved over the prefab, it removed every object because all of them they are all the same prefab so just you hit any of them they're, they're gonna get removed because that's what you told it but because we earlier as I said we want to have a game object variable which I call game of a geo underline game object I store the collider in that variable and I choose that variable as the activate game object without dragging up the prefab or the hierarchy menu you will see that it's all gone now because on the previous test it was turned off so if I go to prefab and turn it back on it shows up and because each individual is being saved in its own game object it is now being removed correctly alright and that's this and that's all and the next we're gonna do is we wanna display text the score um, I o I'm doing it with the new U UI. Uh, f 
fest. I I'm just gonna pull up the full code for this video. Um, there we go. So first you just wanna make sure you will go to game object and UI and create text. And you want to rename it into uh, counting. It should look like this. And in the text, I started with count uh, and zero. And I have the same code in the trigger collider for the sake of simplicity for my own case. So here it's saying so now it wants us to create a public. GUI text called count text and a public GUI text called win text. Um, anything text related is called a string variable, so we know it's two string variables. So basically, just create two string variables one called count and another called count text for now. Then, if you look down on the count text, it's saying Count text dot text equals count plus count to string. Okay. Hmm. If you look up, it's you will see he added the code count equals count plus one set count text. So basically, what he's saying is when we hit the collider, he's saying each time we hit the collider, which is a pickup, and I I have ten of them. Um, Unity's example has uh, twelve of them. He's adding one integer number into uh, count which is then being used later for the text so first we need to add one number to the integer also called count it's created an integer called count so you also want to make an integer called count a count text string and a win text string and you might as well create a current score string as well and I'll explain why later so first, there's an action called int add. So basically, what it's saying is when we hit the trigger event, it hits one of the pickup. The next thing after we deactivate it, it's uh, adding the number one to the um, int variable called count. Um, it then needs to be translated into a string because uh, you see, an integer is a number, and in programming language or in this case for all I know uh, basically I'm just gonna say that the a string doesn't understand int unless you tell it to understand the number as a text so basically come to int says that any number saved in count which starts with one in my case and ends with 10 should be each time updated and translated into text which is count text string and the format and the square is the number so that will be replaced with the number so each time I take a box you will see it's counting one on the hair and it's counting two but to make sure the interface the visual interface which is a text understands it I have to translate it into string so it looks like the same to us, you know, it's still 2 in under the string variable and it's 2 in integer, but it's not the same for the computer. So to m make it show up as a text, as a visual thing for the players, we need to make sure it understands that the number is also a um, string variable. So that's what it's doing um, here. Um, making sure count text equals count is actually a string it's not actually what it's saying there. this is what it's saying the next thing after you converted the string you need to build the string so the text that count text or text you want it to always show count on the screen count zero in my case and when you pick up a box you want it to update and add the number count to string next to it and to do that you need to build the string as you see on the top left it says count zero 
and in my accounting that's what it says if I remove it it's empty but if I click play it's still empty but if I pick up you will see it says count one but because it's weird to not have anything from user friendliness and design aspect I am having zero already but in terms of code because I have a build string if I turn it off without the build string it's not gonna update it's updating in the background count is 4, count times is 4 but current score is nothing because the build string job is to put together the text count which is gonna be on the screen and it's saying that any information in count text and we know that the information in count text is the number saved into in, the, in, in the integer called count which is the box amount of boxes we have placed out which we, which we are getting from int add so each time we hit the box it's saying add one to count integer variable then translate that integer number into text in count text using format square then it says okay so on the screen we want to show count and amount of count text and we want to store the combination of the text count and the amount of number every time we hit a box into something called current score which is also string now even with that it's not gonna update because it's now it's updating correctly here you see because we have added uh, count because we're putting together things now we're saying okay f with the integer is a number the computer needs to understand that number is also text because we want to show it on the screen translated into uh, text okay seven seven good but we also want to show the text count so we need to put together uh, what we want to show so if I wanted to just for the sake of uh, example I might as well go a little into detail if I wrote your smart or wait your IQ <laughs> it says count zero because uh, that's the starting text in the text we wrote here but the minute we take a box oh hold on I forgot to uh, update the text uh, we have to update the text using set property uh, now if I take it see it says, says your IQ right uh, in case you didn't see it maybe I was too quick uh, take a box and it updates your IQ one two three four on the top left here and that because this build string makes sure that we can add any text so if you have any quest you know collect parts or anything that's what it's for so count and I want it to save the number in count text which is trans which is the number we received from account integer which is added by int add save it in current score and then show it on the screen and by showing on the screen if you click on the counting text you want to make sure I to click on the lock on the top right to lock the inspector so I can click on the player for this code and you want to drag the text script in and you want to choose set property then on the property you want to choose text and then you basically instead of writing manually you want to make sure that the text and information shown on the screen is current score because that's where all the information is being stored and put together as a whole and that's basically what it's saying here it's saying so w when we hit the cube int add plus one save it in uh, update it in uh, set count text and the count text what should it be it should be the count which is the private int up here which starts at zero on the void start set count text is empty bin text is empty 
but when we hit a, a cube it's saying plus one so this becomes plus one and this becomes plus one and then it's saying plus count to string because it's uh, an integer so it needs to be uh, told that it's a string also which is what we're doing uh, with the build string so count to string is a current score you could kind of think of think of it like that so this count plus count string is current score context is count text a variable we also have called then it's saying the win condition is if we have collected 12 in my case is 10 show win text you win and that's basically what in compare is for it's saying that the number saved in count because that's where we're adding a new numbers all the time we take a box if it's 10 if it's equal to 10 or more than 10 run state you win and again I use set property and I have a new text and in that text it's empty but when I run it I add manually you win like in the in the set property for our um, score we're using a variable because it's real time but for the win text I just write in manually you win so when you are going around taking everything okay it's, cur it's currently updating all the time it's adding int variable count it says 6 here so if I take one more it will update to 7 right 7 that information is stored here count 7 trans uh, translate it to string 7 and show it up uh, and it's being a se the, the square is um, 7 you know, the amount of number then it's saying build the string put count as you see on the screen to the left and show the information of the number in count text save this save this as one information on the current score and you see on the current score it says count seven and if I take it says count eight so here it says eight on the count eight on the count text and it says current score count eight because count text and count is just numbers so, but we want to show count as a text as well you could take it away technically I think um, and just show um, count text I think uh, if I'm not mistaken it will update just the numbers right it's just updating the numbers um, and that's why we use build string because the numbers could mean anything when you're doing game design. You have to tell the player what, what, is, what is it about. So we, in our case, it's count. So you know you're counting the amount of cubes. You could write uh, amount of cubes collected. You can even write that if you wanted to. And if I click play, it says count zero. Oh, sorry, I need to update it correctly. I uh, have to go back here and we want to have current score because that's where the whole text and numbers are co collected and it's basically amount of cube collected but it's a bit big because of um, the new UI I haven't actually learned it yet so it's a bit big so let's, let's try and see how big we can go oh yeah so I want the cube so it's telling the player more specifically what the numbers mean so that's it uh, that's all there is to it. So now you kind of, hopefully you're able to understand C Sharp when you read it a little bit. So if you find C Sharp and you want to duplicate into Playmaker, maybe it will make more sense. As usual, I'm Amit. I'm uh, hoping it was helpful. If you need more tutorials, more help, uh, feel free to ask me. I'll learn it and then teach you. Thank you. Uh, bye.